and we are back. In this tutorial, I will be showing how to add Supabase authentication to your Flutterflow app. In this tutorial, I'm not going to explain very deeply how it's done, I'm just going to speed run this through. Let's start. First, open up your Supabase. I already have projects set up and connected to my app. Let's open this. Then head to Table Editor. Make sure that this is set up as public, then create a new table. We are going to name this Users. Then we can remove this for now, but remember you have to turn this back on before publishing your app. Then let's add some columns for the information we want to collect from the user. This can be, for example, email, and set it as a text. Then we can have first name, and type will be text. And then we can have username, and same thing in here. Then click on this link icon next to ID, switch this to authentication, and reference will be users. Then add ID in here. Now what Supabase asks is what action we want to do in case this row is update or deleted. For example, this row indicates if you create social media post with your app, then change the username. Do you want that the post changes the username as well? And the other one is that if you delete this user, do you want to delete all of the rows that user have made? Most likely in your app, you should put both of these to cascade, but for this tutorial, I am going with these settings. Then save. Now, I'm going to create a new table. Let's name this as e-commerce. Then, let's add couple columns in here. Our first item is product name. And type will be text. Our second item will be product description. And this will also be text. Now we need to link the user who have made this. Let's name this row as user. Then click on this link icon. Switch this to users. And this to ID. Let's set up both of these to cascade and save. And now we can save this table. Now let's head to authentication page. Click on providers, then click on email. And we will not be needing confirm email or secure email, so we can take them off. Then you can scroll all the way down and click on save. Now we have all set up in our Supabase. It's time to add logic to our Flutterflow side. First step is that I will create authentication page. Let's use this one. Now I will quickly remove all the useless stuff to get rid of these errors. Now go to settings, then Supabase. And now I will update the schema that I had here already. And now my tables show in here. Then we can go to authentication and switch this to enabled. Our authentication type will be Supabase. Our entry page will be authentication page and our logged in page will be our home page. Then we can start building. Click on the sign up button and add new action to it. This will be Supabase create account. Provider will be email. Then select the text fields where user have written their information. Let's close this so it's easier to spot what text fields we are using. 
Then select Password field and confirm Password field. After that is done, we can add one more action to this chain. This will be insert row in Supabase. Select the user's row, then add fields in here. And now we can remove the field that we will not be using. For ID, Supabase will handle this. So click on Authenticated User and User ID. Created at Choose Global Properties. And Current Time. Email will be our Create Email field. Now we have not set up first name and username text fields in here, so we can remove these. Perfect, now you can close this. Then we can add logic to our login button. Switch this to sign in and click on the login button. Add a new action and add login. Then choose email and add here email and password field, then close. Now we are all set up in here. Let's go home page and add some elements in there. Firstly, let's add column in here. Then inside the column, let's add text field. Then we can add button. So that is our system to create data. Now we need list view in here to show our data. And inside the list view, we can add text. Perfect. Let's add some padding to this button. Then click on the list view and add query to it. This will be super base query. Then choose our collection and click on create. Click on the text and bind value to it and choose the product title. Then give it some default value and confirm. Then add action to our button. This will be insert row. Collection will be same. Then add field in here. This will be title. And value will be our text field. Then add another field that indicates who have created this product. Switch this to user. And this will be authenticated user and user ID. After that, open up our action center. We need to add couple more actions to this chain. The first one will be clear text fields. Then choose the text field that we have just created. Then create refresh database request. And choose our list view. Then we can close this. Now I'm going to edit the color of these texts so they will not appear invincible. Perfect. Now we may also create logout button. Take a duplicate of this. This will be our logout button so we can remove this entire chain in here. Then add new action and search for logout. And close. I will also edit this name so I don't confuse these buttons. Now there is one more thing that we need to do in our database. We have to edit the rules so that we are able to post stuff in here. Go to your table, then click on add RLS policy. 
Then create a policy. Click this and switch this to all and save policy. Then go back to your Superbase settings and click once more get schema. Then we can finally try our app. Go to your sign up page and create your account in here. And then we land on home page. Now we can try to post something. And our post shows in here. And now, if we go to our database, locate the post. We can see all the information about the user who has created this. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that I will see you in my next one. Have a wonderful day.